Now, a couple videos back, I briefly talked about some of the issues that I have with what you might call the other sources of Star Wars canon beyond the movies, those being the animated shows, novels, comic books, video games, and so on. Basically, anything that tells a story that takes place within the same continuity as the movies is a part of the larger canon or collection of authentic stories, which is what the word canon actually means in this instance. Anyway, in that video, I began to touch on why the books and comics from the old expanded universe, now called Legends, tended to be better and more enjoyable, and that's simply because back then, it was primarily the books that drove the overall story of Star Wars forward. Truly major galaxy-shaking or shaping events, and major reveals, transpired within their pages, and they felt epic and important because of that. They felt worth reading. However, today, and this isn't a complaint, it's just a fact, but it's primarily the movies where this happens, or where the big, truly epic stories are and will continue to be told. Though yeah, upcoming shows like The Mandalorian will likely also not shy away from potentially quote-unquote important or truly big events or reveals, and the animated shows too have had their moments, but it'll likely always be the movies that the greatest of stories are reserved for. And because of this, it basically leaves the other sources of canon unwilling or unable to get into the really good stuff. Nothing all that big or important tends to happen there because why waste a good story on a book when, relatively speaking, only a small number of people are going to read it compared to how many might watch that story unfold on the big screen, or the little one. And you can't have events that are too big or important happen that would directly affect the movies because you can't expect everyone who wants to watch the movies to read and keep up with what's happening in the books. And don't get me wrong here, you shouldn't have to read a book to enjoy a movie, that's not what I'm saying here at all. When it comes to these other sources of canon, and their relation to the movies, there is indeed a very fine line between being relevant to the bigger story and required reading to understand it. You never want your audience to be watching a movie and not know what's going on, only to be told after the fact that they would have understood it if they'd only read this particular book. Best case scenario is, they'll go pick up the book and read it after the movie, but the worst case, and far more likely scenario, is they're not going to want to watch your movies anymore because they don't want to do homework ahead of time. And coming from someone who, for a couple different reasons, is what you might call a canon junkie who does both like to keep up with all the other sources of canon because I like knowing all the little details and I do enjoy reading Star Wars stories most of the time, and because I try to stay up to date with everything because, well, I do this here on YouTube, Anyway, a lot of the time it does come off feeling a little bit like homework. I find myself reading these stories sometimes just because of the little tidbits of information they may or may not offer, and not because the story itself is good and engaging. And when people ask me if a particular new canon Star Wars book or comic book is good, I usually respond by asking, what type of review are you looking for? Because there's three different ways to judge them. The first way is if it's a good story on its own. If it's actually a well-written and enjoyable book just for what it is. In other words, if you remove the word Star Wars from the title, would it still be a good story and would it still hold up? The next way is kind of the opposite of the first, and it's if it's just a good Star Wars story or not. If it's something that a Star Wars fan would actually want to read and enjoy, either because it captures the spirit of the franchise or for some other reason. And the last way, and the one those who generally don't or won't read the books are the most concerned about, is did it offer any interesting information? Anything that they quote-unquote need to know or should know? And the answer to those last questions is almost always no, because these stories don't generally include truly important events or information, like I was talking about before. And instead, at their best, they come off feeling like supplementary material to help support the story, and at their worst, they come off feeling like a crutch for the movies, a way to cover things up that they either missed or just didn't have time to cover, though one could argue should have found time for. For example, if you want to know anything at all about the backstory of the First Order, or why it's the Resistance opposing them and not the New Republic itself, well, you'll have to read books and comics to get that story, because the movies never even remotely address it, when they probably should to at least some extent. Though yeah, I know some of you will want to point out that never once does the original trilogy give us any real depth to the story, or how the Empire came to power, or where the Rebellion came from that's fighting against them. We're just thrown right into the middle of it all and go along for the ride in three movies. And it works just fine there, and did long before the prequels came out to actually give us that backstory. So what's the difference this time? Well, why it doesn't work the same way now as it did then is because we do have the greater understanding of the story now. We have context and know the recent history of the galaxy. When your overall story begins in the middle of a huge galactic war, that's one thing. When you continue that same story and put it right back into the middle of another galactic scale conflict and don't tell us how we got from A to B, well, that's just lazy storytelling.
And speaking of that, or the other sources of canon being used as a crutch or to fill in the blanks left by the movies, the worst example of this, or the best I guess you could say, is learning in the novelization of The Last Jedi that Rey had essentially downloaded all of Kylo Ren's training from his mind, and that it happened during the interrogation scene in The Force Awakens, and that's how she knows how to use a lightsaber and to use the Force in other ways. Which is so ridiculous, I can see why they didn't mention it in the movie. Though truthfully, I bet what happened here is the author of the book was no doubt asked to explain how and why Rey knew how to do what she did in the movie, since the movie itself had no interest in doing that itself. And considering what he had to work with, that was the best he could come up with. So, in a way, a tip of the cap to Jason Fry for at least trying to give it an explanation when the movies completely ignored it. But perhaps what's ultimately at the core of the problem with the other sources of canon is that they take time periods or characters and just look for stories to tell about them, instead of looking for or just trying to tell good stories. The best example of this I can give is the flagship Star Wars series from Marvel, and how it's been telling mostly pointless stories about Han, Luke, and Leia, and so on, set between the events of episodes 4 and 5 for nearly 70 issues and counting. I mean, what relevant stories can they even give us in that time period? There's not a great deal of change that can happen in these characters. For example, Luke can't learn anything about his past, or all too much about the Jedi or the Force itself. I mean, he struggles to pull a lightsaber to himself from two feet away in The Empire Strikes Back, and later tells Yoda in that same movie, when he first meets him and doesn't know who he is, that he's looking for a great warrior. Which implies Luke likely knows very little about what the Jedi are really supposed to be, that he's discovered next to nothing about their true purpose in the years since the events of A New Hope. He probably thinks of them as little more than the great generals who led the Republic forces in the Clone Wars, hence he tells Yoda he's looking for a great warrior, because that's all he envisions them to be. And sure, in the pages of these comics you can cover how the Rebels struggled to find a new base after Yavin if you really want to, how they came upon Hoth and built their base there. I don't know that that's a great story, but it's an interesting one I suppose. And you could also cover the bounty hunter they ran into on Ord Mantell, which is the incident Han mentions to Leia in The Empire Strikes Back, and what also convinces him to leave the Rebels and to pay off Jabba before it's too late apparently. That could possibly make for a good story, but other than that, there's really not much to cover in this time period. But don't tell that to the comic books who continue to tell us about one side mission after another, or these tricky situations our heroes keep finding themselves in, that they always manage to get themselves out of without a scratch because, well we know nothing major can happen to them in this time period. And one of the appeals of Han, Luke, and Leia, at least to me, in the movies is that, in a sense they feel like everyday people that manage to achieve what seems to be impossible. Yet this comic book makes them feel like superhumans who get in and out of tricky situations or jams all of the time, and instead of enhancing the original trilogy, all it really does is take away from it, at least in my opinion. All that being said about the other sources of canon, I'm not here to say that everything in it has been horrible or unnecessary or just been patchwork for the movies. There's been some really good stuff in it too. In fact, there are a few real diamonds in the rough that are actually exceptionally good. And I'll go over two of the books that, for different reasons, were fantastic and represent what the other sources of canon could and perhaps should be. And the first one is, believe it or not, the book Phasma. Now, yeah, in one sense, this was yet another case of taking a character, and a mostly irrelevant one in the movies, and looking for a story to tell about them. The difference here is, it was actually a really good, interesting story on its own. The best way I could describe it is, it was a mix between Mad Max and Star Wars, and for me at least, it really works. It also doesn't present itself like most Star Wars books do, which is neither a good or bad thing necessarily, it's just something that very much worked in this particular book. In other words, anyone could pick this up and enjoy the story for what it is. It doesn't completely rely on you having knowledge of the Star Wars galaxy. Yes, obviously a Star Wars fan would likely get more out of it or understand it on a different level, but this book seemed to prioritize story over all else, and it worked really well. Another good book which did the exact opposite of Phasma in many respects was the book Catalyst, which was a prequel book to Rogue One. And this book is so relevant to the movie that it's almost, just almost, required reading for Rogue One. It managed to walk that narrow line between relevant and required oh so well, and goes into the backstory of the Death Star project, explores many relationships that the movie eludes to being very important or interesting, like Galen Erso and Krennic, or Krennic and Tarkin, and it really gives some backstory to the characters that just had virtually no screen time. Again, like Galen Erso and his wife Lyra, who dies at the beginning of the film. 
All in all, what's really great about the book Catalyst is that the movie Rogue One feels like a direct continuation of the very same story. And I dare say it's the only book in the new canon that truly feels like a part of the movie universe. Yes, I know it's all the same continuity and it does generally feel that way, or is supposed to, but oftentimes, at least for me, there is a sense of disconnect between the books, comics, and so on, and the story we see on the big screen. Again, most of the time when you read a book, you can just tell they can't or don't want to spoil anything that the movie might cover. They give you little pieces of information or lead you to believe something might be important or relevant to the movie that's to come, but eventually it isn't. Like, there's this big reveal coming that it'll make it all worthwhile to read, which is what the Aftermath trilogy felt like it was doing with the character of Gallius Rax, but ultimately, there's absolutely no payoff to the bigger story, and that whole trilogy just kind of feels irrelevant. And as I've said before in other videos, in some ways Star Wars could be more like the MCU, only better and more elaborate or complex for those willing to venture down that rabbit hole. Because yes, the movies always must stand on their own. I would never ever argue otherwise. I would never make it so you had to keep up with the other sources of canon to understand and enjoy the films. But there are ways to make all these books and comics far, far more relevant, and in turn, far more interesting. Because if they hadn't rushed the sequel trilogy into production, and had instead sat down and spent as much time as it took to map out the whole damn story the trilogy was going to tell, thought about virtually every little connecting thread and detail, you could have formed one large, compelling, overall story that took place over multiple different sources. You could have decided what books and comics to make, and how they would fit into the overall story, and feel like an actual direct and important part of it, without necessarily being required to watch the movies. Because again, you do have to be careful about walking that line between relevant and required. But why not give us the backstory of Snoke in a book released between episodes 7 and 8? Especially considering the movie didn't touch on his backstory at all, and we're going to get that story eventually anyway. Why not have a book about Ben and Luke's relationship that would be released right after episode 8? A surprise announcement even, because you don't want to spoil the movie. And it's one that goes into what went wrong between those two. And again... It's a story we're going to get eventually, so why didn't you release it at the right time? And I know a lot of people point the finger of blame at a lot of different things when discussing what's wrong with Star Wars these days. But for me, the lack of planning is far and away the biggest problem right now. Oh, what could have been if they'd only figured out the whole story of the sequels in advance, mapped out what books and comics would be released, and in what order to further enhance the story that was going on in the movies. And maybe if the animated show Resistance wasn't quite so childish and irrelevant, it could play a part in all this too. And then when the sequel trilogy is done, you move on to a different time period altogether, with new characters and a general new idea overall, which at its core would still somehow feel like Star Wars. And you could literally rinse and repeat this formula till the end of time, but go on Lucasfilm and Disney, you just keep going on ahead without a plan. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about the other sources of canon. Do you keep up with them or not? And if you do, is that because you read the stories yourself or just watch YouTube videos that cover what happens in them? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.